Hey everybody, Dr. Houlihan here again. I know I talk to you guys a lot about shoes and footwear, which is also a passion of mine, but what I do when I show up to work every day is I work with people who have scoliosis. So today, I wanted to talk to you guys about five myths that I hear all the time from my patients, and I wanted to give you the reasons why they are not true. Before I get into the myths, there's a few concepts about scoliosis that you have to understand beforehand. The concepts that need to be understood are a Cobb angle, a Risser score, and age at diagnosis. The Cobb angle is the measure of the lateral curvature in the scoliosis. A Risser score can be seen on an x-ray. It's a stripe of bone that starts to form around the crest of the pelvis, and we can use this to track growth and see how close or how far a person is from reaching skeletal maturity. Age at diagnosis somewhat coincides with the Risser score, but it's also something to consider when we're talking about how much progression someone might have in their scoliosis or how much progression someone might not have in their scoliosis. 80% of cases are diagnosed as adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. However, there is also adult degenerative scoliosis, which the onset occurs much later in life. There's a different set of considerations for that, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Okay, so the first myth that I deal with a lot is that you have to have surgery to fix scoliosis. There are certain radiological criteria that qualify someone to start beginning the conversation about surgery. Most often it's a fusion surgery or a tethering surgery, unless there's some more congenital changes that have happened to the vertebrae. But in those instances, it's really up to you. There's no definite answer to whether or not you need to have surgery. It's not your destiny by any means. In the adolescent stage, it's really more of a prediction as to how much the curve will progress and if that might cause problems later on down the line. Some people have scoliosis and they don't have any problems with it. It happens all the time that I have people come into my office and they get diagnosed with scoliosis at age 60, 70, even into their 80s and they had no idea that they had scoliosis their whole life. So it's not necessarily that if a curve reaches 40 degrees or 45 degrees that you're going to have pain and discomfort throughout the rest of your life. Consider also that if you're meeting with a surgeon, their profession is surgery. It's what they do all day long, every day. It's what they know how to do, and it's really, it's their whole world. So if you come to a surgeon asking if you should have surgery, the answer is probably going to be yes. I've had patients in the clinic all the time who have had a surgeon tell them that surgery is their only option. They go through the physical therapy, they commit to the process, they follow through, they're diligent with their exercises, and by the time they're through, they don't even feel like they need surgery anymore. Myth number two, scoliosis is going to limit the activities and hobbies that you're able to participate in. So this one's just not true. There's Olympic athletes like Usain Bolt, Janet Evans, James Blake, Lamar Grant, all of whom are competing at the highest level in their craft and they're not limited by their scoliosis. It all just comes down to the overall health and wellness of your body. And it's totally plausible to have an athletic and functional body that includes a spine that has scoliosis. Myth number three, Exercise can't help your scoliosis. Myself and all of my coworkers here at ABQ Scoliosis and Spine Therapy are all certified in the Schroff method of physical therapy, which is a purely exercise-based mode of therapy. Using this mode of therapy in which all of the positions and the props and the exercises are particularly designed for each patient and each specific curve pattern, we've had hundreds of patients over the years who come to us and by the time they're finished, they not only look better and feel better, but in many cases we're able to reduce the angle of the scoliosis or even eliminate the scoliosis altogether. In the adult population, it's less likely that we're going to reduce or eliminate the scoliosis altogether, but these exercises can still help out with pain that is from a neurological origin or from muscle tightness and postural imbalance. All these different things can still be helped with exercise. Even in a broader sense of exercising, anyone who has a sedentary lifestyle and is not exercising, who then starts exercising, nine times out of ten they're going to experience some health benefits from that. And the same is true whether or not your spine has scoliosis. Myth number four, if you're diagnosed with scoliosis early on and your Cobb angle is less than 20 degrees, you should just watch and wait. This is an ineffective way for dealing with scoliosis for a number of reasons. One of which being, it's sometimes difficult to get in to see the doctor for a follow-up visit. So for adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, where it has the potential to progress rapidly during rapid periods of growth, if it's waiting six months, eight months, 12 months until that follow-up visit, it's possible that the curve will progress to a place where now it's more difficult to address by the time you get in to see the doctor again. If your car had an oil leak, you wouldn't wait until all the oil was gone to take it to the mechanic. 
Or if you saw a fire in your kitchen, you wouldn't wait until the whole house was up in flames to call 911. It's something you want to address early on. The smaller the curb is, the easier it is to address just with simple exercises without having the need for bracing or anything else. Myth number five, chiropractors can fix your scoliosis. So I should say that chiropractic manipulation is an ineffective way to address scoliosis. There's little to no evidence that suggests that in the classical model of you go to the chiropractor, they put you on the table, they crack your back and they send you on your way. That sort of chiropractic care has not been proven effective in treating scoliosis. There are certain programs in which chiropractors are eligible to train in that have been proven effective in treating scoliosis, such as the CLEAR protocol. However, there's only a handful of chiropractors in the United States practicing that protocol, and to find one of those is few and far between. Chiropractors can play a role in a comprehensive team as part of a multifactorial approach to scoliosis care, but chiropractic care in and of itself is ineffective in treating scoliosis. Okay, so that's five common myths about scoliosis busted. Feel free to visit our website at scoliosisabq.com or coming soon to the Phoenix area, scottsdalessst.com. The websites are not just for active or prospective patients. There's all sorts of helpful resources on there regarding scoliosis and scoliosis care. I hope this information was helpful for you guys. Feel free to drop questions or comments down below. And as always, I'll have more videos on the way soon.